computer. So we are recording. This is the Zoom Statics Friday, April 9th at 11 a.m. And um, this is April. April 10th, Steve. Is it 10th? Okay. Is, yep. it, is it April? Yes, it is okay, April. Good. So we got April and we got, uh, uh, we're going to see the waiting room. I got to let some people in. So I'll do that. So this is what I emailed you. Uh, after our boondoggle on Tuesday night, we gave you the uh, loading conditions. This was on uh, page two of the um, uh, of the handout. Okay, um, and that was this right here. Well, okay. So this was on page two of the deck handout. And then we went through all of these calcs. We had our live load of 55 PSF, pounds per square foot. We had our dead load PSF, the decking. I wish I hadn't made them the same numbers. I won't do that next year. So the decking is five PSF, pounds per square foot, is gonna be added to that 55, right? That's going to give us 60 pounds per square foot. And that is the dead load plus live loading um, expressed as a uh, distributed load on a surface. Distributed load on a surface. We then went to our 3D view. And um, this is our deck joist. It's a 2 by 10. Right? Its span is 16 feet with a little over two foot overhang. It's supported at one end by the ledger, at the other end by the girder, which we'll analyze these um, down the road. So the distance, half the distance to the next deck joist is eight inches because there's 16 inches on center. So it's eight inches this way, eight inches that way, gives you a tributary width of 16 inches, which is 1.33 feet. So we've circled that in living color, in blue. Okay. So a distributed load on a surface times a tributary width gives a what? A linear load. So that would be a typical units quiz question. Distributed load on a surface times a tributary width, pounds per square foot times feet, gives you pounds per foot, a linear load. Well, it's so close to 79.8 is so close to 80. This is America, so we can change that to 80 pounds per foot. But we've got to take into account the weight of the deck joists, right? We took into account the decking. But the deck joist is given as a linear load. That's why we did not include it in our analysis right here, which were pounds per square foot. So we got to take this pounds per foot, pounds per linear foot, the five pounds per foot, add it to the 80, and that's going to be our total linear load, our total linear load. And that, I circled that in living color in green, came up here. And that's what you were going to, um, you were going to uh, uh, use that loading diagram to calculate the reactions to the nearest pound, a uh, tenth of a pound. I've got to um, grade those, um, those reactions. I think I got 50 out of 62. It's ticking upwards of the last assignment, which was only 41 out of 62. I'm up to, we're up to 50. So if you're doing your homework, keep doing it. If you're not, stop losing these easy points, okay? Um, so that, that uh, is closed. So I'll give you that right now, and then I will post it. R1, actually, let me go to the Word doc. So R1. is 573. Can you see the word doc? Yes. yes. All righty then. Yep. 
573, and this is 786.7, hashtag. So those are your two reactions. Again, this was 85, you know, you filled all this in. We had asked you for the reaction calcs. Hopefully you did some of the moments about each reaction and then did the verification. And then what's gonna be due for, let's say our next Zoom is uh, Tuesday night. So I think we've done enough shear moment diagrams. Let's do, um, let's have this due Monday night at 11.59 p.m. Does that sound okay? Wait, so the areas wasn't due um, today, um, yeah, from yesterday? Nope. Uh, um, what if you got them done and submitted them yesterday? You gotta, re you gotta resubmit them. And the reason I said right. that, look guys and gals, are there's 62 of you, okay? A couple of you emailed me asking me what was due. Now, you know that if we were in person, old grandpa would kind of bark at you a little bit and say, well, uh -huh. say. okay? This is all I asked you to do, okay? So just keep please reading this stuff. So even if you put it on, you got to download it again to give me Could you show us the top of that? The, the shear motion question. diagram. Okay. Don't give me more or give me less than what I want. It just, it makes the bookkeeping a pain. Make your boss's uh, life easy on the easy stuff. All right, question. What if you rounded up the reactions? Like to the next uh, number, would that be wrong? Nah, that's fine. I'll work with you on that. Just, just re-download it. So I have- can you show us the setup for the reactions? No, because if I have time, I will, but you're gonna go back to the, um, can you see my uh, PowerPoint? Yeah. You're gonna go right back to this. Right, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get the beam reactions, which you just did. If you didn't get them right, I gave them to you. You're going to draw the light lines down at each significant point. You, folks, if you're going into structural theory, you have to be able to go back into your notes and look at the step-by-step -step process. Okay, I, I just can't emphasize that enough. And, and Mr. Van Dusen can chime in because what we find that even the seniors are not going back to their notes on how to do a lot of this stuff. And their grades are showing it. So go right back to this and go step-by-step. -step. Then if you have a specific question, Take a screenshot of your work, plus say a screenshot of the step that you're not uh, familiar with. And then I'll answer your question. Be more than happy to answer specific questions. I'm not gonna go over everything step by step again. You do have, this is the one where we did beam weight. Uh, the one that you're gonna do for, um, uh, the one that you're gonna do for um, Monday night is actually simpler than this one. The only difference between this one, which we've given you the step-by-step, -step, especially this part for the shear and for the moment, the only difference is, is that we're moving this right end reaction in to create an overhang, what we call a simple cantilever. We didn't give you any partial linear loads. So if you go to here, Okay, this, this is it. There's only one linear load you got to deal with. You have did, did, I have a question. Did you have to find the point load, which is um, the 85 times the full length of the beam? Would you have to do that? Well, that's one of the ways to get the reaction, but some of you are making the mistake by using the point load in your shear moment diagram. You, you cannot use that. Oh. You can't use the 16 foot, right? Let's see here. You'll have to use the, the, the 1310 for the shear moment. Well, you're going you're gonna to analyze the whole beam. See, Ronaldo, I told you, bro. Ugh. See, you're just going to analyze it. You're really going to analyze it in, set in parts of the span, right? We analyzed this part because it was just a linear load. Then we analyzed this segment of the span because it was both beam weight and a partial linear load. We then analyze between here and here because it was just a linear load. 
between the end of the partial linear load and the uh, concentrated load. And then we analyze this last segment. So what you're gonna analyze now is you're just gonna analyze between here and here, and then you have the reaction. And then you're gonna analyze between here and here. You know that the shear is gonna start at zero and it's gonna end at zero. So oh. go back into that handout and go step by step. That's how you gotta do it. Otherwise, you're gonna struggle all 15 weeks in structural theory and in steel and or concrete. This is where I want you to show the area one calcs, the area two calcs, and the area three calcs. Right in this little block right here is where you're going to show your slope calcs for the distance from where it crosses the zero shear. And let's see the example there. Right? Here's where we cross that zero line. And we, again, where we cross the zero line, we showed you how to do those, uh, do those calcs using the slope equation. So go back to that handout to calculate how to get that 4.2 distance and the 7.8 foot distance. Because then that, wherever the shear crosses the zero line, it becomes a significant point for the moment curve. Okay. Also, if you see anybody in the waiting room, just chime in and let me know. because I'm, I'm not always looking at that. I have a question. Yeah. Will there ever be a negative point on the moment curve? Oh, yeah. There was... Um, um, Let's see. No, there wasn't on any of the other ones, but yeah. Yep. Most most all cantilevers have a negative component. Yes. That's why we're we're trying to throw you as many uh, types of beams as we can to get you ready for structural theory. So then would it still it would still start at the zero line though, right? Always starts at the zero. The only time it doesn't is when it doesn't. <laughs> uh, that the only time it doesn't, and we have not gone over that, and I'm not sure if we'll get to it, we may. Maybe we'll analyze this little bugger right here. Okay, that's a fixed end reaction. So that will have, in other words, that beam right there literally goes into the house and, and is uh, continuous. It's actually a, a, um, um, a continuing of the main beam in the house that holds up the second floor floor joist. And then it holds up the triangular deck. Maybe we'll, this fixed end reaction, but that's a different beast. Okay, the, the ones we're giving you now, the shear starts at zero and ends at zero. The moment starts at zero and ends at zero with a slight rounding off error. So, so for the shear on the um, on the homework we have to do, does it end at zero at the cantilever like reaction, or does it end at zero at the end of the beam? Here, be the end of the beam, huh? It starts at zero here. It ends at zero here. What it does right. in between depends on your loading. Uh, what your loading magnitude is, where your loads are, but it's always going to start and end at zero. All righty. Starts at zero, it ends, and here is a slight rounding off error, okay? And you're going to have that, okay? So as far as the reaction, as far as the shear, try to keep doing these shears in your calculator and not clearing at every point. Just it's a literally a constant run from where you start to zero. You go concentrated loads down, down, down. Uh, this is another concentrated load. You go straight down, linear load straight up at the reaction goes back to zero. That's your check. That's your check. Okay. Look for the pattern. That's that's the critical part of this. Okay, so everybody's okay with having this due Monday at 11.59. Yep. Uh, I'll, I'll post that on Vanco. I'll put a drop box in. If you've already done it, you have to redrop it. 
Um, Can you say that again, please? If, if you've already done the shared diagram, you have to, you, you still have to put that in the, the new Dropbox. Okay. Okay, thank you. Now, what I also sent you is a lab experiment. This one, uh, this is where I feel bad that you're not here to watch this, these experiments. And I can't get into the lab, we'll just leave it at that. Decisions were made, we'll leave it at that. They're not letting us in the lab to, to run these tests. I thought I had some videos for this, but I do not. So this, these are easy shear calculations. These are easy shear calculations. And what we did is we took some Gorilla Glue. I don't know if I spelled that right. I think it's only one R in Gorilla. And we used the um, woodworker's glue, the yellow glue. And we glued um, three pieces together. Okay. And then we broke it. So we put it in the compression machine. We broke here. You can see it actually broke at the glued surface in part of it. It also, in this area, it, the, uh, the wood actually broke. So we're going to just do some very basic, basic, basic calculations here. You're going to do, um, um, and, then, and then what we also did is we used a dowel. We used a poplar dowel. Okay, we'll get into allowable stresses later, but this is just a simple shear stress. Okay, and um, so then we broke it again and we literally sheared that dowel in two. This is out of JN's book, I think chapter nine in shear, kind of gives us an example of what they call transverse shear or vertical shear. This, I got the picture from Mr. Vogt. This is, this is actually wood siding, and that's where it is, uh, the siding has failed in horizontal shear, right? Horizontal to the grain. Here it's failed in vertical shear. We're really over, oversimplifying this, but it, it, it works for some great calcs, okay? So, the glued surface on the wood um, the yellow glue, okay, they're the same surfaces. The one thing I forgot, and this is posted on Vanco, so I'll have to re, So, do we have single or double shear? Which will affect your resisting area. I didn't put in a column for that. Right here, how many surfaces, of, how many glued surfaces do we have for this example? Two. Two. We got a glued surface here. We got a glued surface here. The width of a two by four is three and a half inches. So we glued it the full width. And then from here to here is four inches. So our glued surface is a little over 12 square inches, but it's in double shear. So you're gonna to have to do what to this? Your resisting area, your glued area, is not just one glued area. It's two because it's double shear. So you got to multiply this by two. Okay. The load at failure with the wood glue was 9,000 pounds. So this we can actually calculate. Now that's a uh, uh, that's a screenshot. So that's shear stress actual. 
Shame on me, Mr. Van Dusen. I got that wrong. That should be uh, PSI. Okay, so I'll change that as well. Maybe we can cheat so I don't have to go back and do a lot of work. Well, that didn't work. PSI. That's in PSI. Okay, don't worry about the failure type. Actually, you could say that it's both glue and the wood. Okay, I'm not, uh, not we'll talk about that someday. So for the Gorilla Glue, in other words, you gotta give me the numbers for this, for the yellow glue, and you gotta show me the calcs for the Gorilla Glue over here. Just show me how you got these, how you got the stress, okay? Now with the dowel, the dowel was, um, I think five eighths is 0.6225 inches. So the dowel is in there. Is it uh, single or double shear for the dowel? Anybody, Bueller, Bueller? Single or double? It's double because you got a dowel here and a dowel here resisting that load pushing down. So whatever you get with double shear, you're gonna put a two, and then the resisting area is gonna be times two. So what's the, what's the cross-sectional area of that dowel? Gotta figure that one out, okay? Well, we've done that before. We're actually working on an exam for you guys. We'll do it next week or the week after. We'll give, give you plenty of uh, heads up and uh, we're experimenting with that. So this one I thought, <clears throat> uh, so you're gonna show the, what we did is we put a poplar, a wood dowel in there, and it actually sheared the wood. Now we also put a steel dowel in there. It was actually a shear connector, like a bolt if you will, 5 8 inch bolt. And what do you think failed, the bolt or the wood? The wood. The wood, so it failed in a bearing failure. In other words, it elongated that hole and eventually it was a like a tensile tear right up the, the wood, okay? But I don't have a picture of that, I thought I did. So you're just gonna show me the, um, and again, the steel dowel was in double shear, okay? That was in double shear. So you're gonna show me the, the steel dowel calcs. Okay, so I'm thinking uh, this one, uh, have this, since we're doing a Tuesday night Zoom, have this one due Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. So you can come back with questions Tuesday night and then just uh, get it, um, get the calcs all done, submit it that night, and that's that. How's that sound? Does that sound fair? You said on Tuesday night? Yeah. So the shear moment diagram will be due Monday night from the deck analysis. And this lab experiment, this simple lab experiment will be due Tuesday night. Is that working in with your other class loads, workloads? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And like I said, uh, you know, the freshman the other night said, hey, can you give, you know, they negotiate a little bit and I'm open to that. But these are fairly simple calcs. Go back to your, uh, um, actually go back to your units handout that we gave you at the start of the semester. Okay. So that's that. Okay. 
So that's, we'll save that one. And I'll resubmit that one. That is already uh, on Vanco. Like I said, I'll resubmit it with the, with the few, uh, the few changes. Now, the other thing that I've done is I've started um, in addition to PowerPoint um, and I've submitted it as a separate PDF in a folder. And let me show you where it is. You can see my Vanco Hall. Yep. Um, beams, v, VM diagrams and stress, uh, stress analysis. So there's the first one that you got, which was emailed to you. And then this is the one I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so you have that. So it's going to start here and, it's, and this is the, I, I took the same page two from the other um, PDF and I just repeated it because it's, it's some great reading from JN, some great uh, humor. And this is what we're starting. So you now have this on PDF. Oh, no, that's your uh, lab experiments. Oh, a lot of times I'm going to refer to JN's page 51 in chapter four. That's all on Vanco. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then here's the new, the new handout for you. I'm going to do it in PowerPoint so that I can change anything. There's no homework due for this other than to uh, read it. So you want to read this between now and Tuesday. And then this is really the last big thing we're going to talk about. We are going to talk about deflection and beams. We are going to talk about columns. But in terms of beam analysis, this is the granddaddy. This is the calculating actual stress, eventually comparing it to allowable stresses. And so this is right out of JN's book, chapter 10, page 120, 121 and 122. I've changed some of the um, symbols because they have changed since JN wrote this in the 1970s. So he has actually, in his book, it's little, stress is little s. B is for bending. Okay. Also here. Stress is little s, now it's little v. He had little s with shear, now shear is v. So I put in the, the new, um, the new symbols, okay? And this, we talk about, uh, he said, um, Building stress is another name for the tension and compression stresses that develop in a loaded beam. And then he says, see page 98 for discussion of how a moment affects a beam. That's actually uh, in this earlier part of, the, of the, uh, the PowerPoint. If you had that concentrated load, we've talked about that in the past, you put a concentrated load in the middle, it's going to create tension stresses, flexural stresses in the bottom and compression stresses in the top. And where tension changes to, uh, um, where tension uh, changes to compression is called the neutral axis. The neutral axis. And so here's the bending stress formula. And the M is the maximum moment. So that comes from the moment diagram. The kicker is our moment diagrams are in foot pounds and we got to change it to inch pounds. So we're going to go over this again on Tuesday. C is the distance from the center to either the extreme top or bottom fiber in the beam. So if you had a rectangular shape, 
the neutral axis is right in the middle, and so it would be C is from here to here, or from here to here, whichever is greatest. Here it's symmetrical. Here it would not be symmetrical. That's like a C channel in structural steel. We're not gonna get much into structural steel in this course. That's where Mr. Altanius gets into that in structural theory. And I is the moment of inertia of the cross section. Okay, moment of inertia of the cross section. And what are the units of that? Those were inches to the fourth. And what was the buzzword for moment of inertia? It's a measure of the stiffness of the shape. Modulus of elasticity was a measure of the stiffness of the material. We'll get into that later. Now, this S right here is a section modulus. And here, JN talks about it in his chapter four, page 51. The text actually does a better job of talking about it, page 375, chapter eight. The buzzword, folks, is depth. The deeper the beam, the more load the beam can handle. And S is equal to the moment of inertia divided by that centroid dimension. So it's inches to the fourth divided by inches. So the, the units for section modulus is inches. So when we talk about the deepness of a beam, the deepness is the depth is from the top of the flange to the bottom of the flange. In other words, the taller the beam, we call it the deeper the beam, but the taller the beam, the higher section modulus it has and the greater load that it can handle. So that's a new term that we're throwing at you, section modulus. Okay, so you want to remember that potentially for the um, units quiz for next week. And I'll put that on, uh, um, I'll write you a little note on Banco. We'll do the units quiz the middle of next week. Um, I can't remember how long we gave you to do this one. I think it just ended about an hour ago, so hopefully you did the units quiz. Okay, don't forget that's added to your uh, average for your exams. So eventually, by using all this, and, and here, what JN did is he laid it out for us. Here's your roadmap, here's your checklist. So we can thank our good friend JN. Like from Shawshank Redemption, I guess I just miss my friend. So JN said the approach is the same. Find the reactions, construct the shear moment diagrams. We need the maximum values from those diagrams, okay? The value of shears in pounds, the maximum value of moment is in inch pounds. And there's your bending stress formulas. We calculate the, actu the greatest actual bending stress and shear stress, and we gotta compare that to allowable stress. Okay. So I'll make a little note about the golden rule. Is that gold enough? Where's gold? That's the golden rule, baby. Okay. So that's where we're stopping right now. We're going to continue on Tuesday with all of this. And we're going to go back into the this once we once we get this done. We'll know our maximum shear, maximum moments, and then we get into the stress calcs. And we're going to walk you through this step by step. Okay. We're gonna walk you through it step by step. 
We're going to determine if the beams are safe in bending and shear. Then eventually we'll get into deflection calcs. One of you um, found this on the internet, so you're able to calculate the, the reactions according to these formulas. Just watch out because on my tests and Mr. Altenius' tests, Mr. Van Dusen's tests, you got to do it by taking some of the moments, unless you can memorize those formulas. Okay. And we're not going to make you do these formulas, but we're going to be able to, to talk about deflection. Then we'll talk about the girder. None of this is due. Keep checking Vanco. Okay. And this is stuff from back in the day. So right now, shear moment diagrams are due Monday night, midnight, 11.59 p.m. Monday. So is it open right now? The submission file? No, I got to uh, I got to establish it. All right. I wanted to make sure that you guys were okay with the uh, the time frame before I set it up. Oh, uh, but as soon as I get off the off there, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna eat. All I have is a 55 gallon gallon drum of peanut butter. I love that stuff. Shouldn't have said that, but I love that stuff. So next time I'll I gotta write down Hagrid. I gotta crunchy or creamy. Uh, crunchy. Oh, love it. Yeah, got, got <laughs> super crunch, baby, super crunch. Oh, it's the unit weight. Oh, the unit weight. I believe you calculated for me was eighty seventy nine pounds per cubic foot. That was a home back in. <laughs> I'll never forget it. So that's what we've done with with all of this with with these new. Um, with this new stress, we're starting to tie in statics with strengths of materials. We're getting real close to being done, but we're still going to go to, at a slow enough pace to go step by step for you until finals week. I'm not going to go super fast, okay? So again, if you have specific questions, please, I, I love questions, just make them specific. Take a screenshot, send it to me. Um, you know, I'll take a look at it and, and help you out. Our first example, again, for stress calcs will be the deck choice from the deck load trace problem. Stay tuned. Um, I believe that's about it. Do you have any questions before we stop? I'm going to pause.